Hey gang, show by Platt, and today I show you how to convert from a Sankey keg to a corny keg. That's next. <laughs> Recently, you might see my video where I reviewed the ITAP counter pressure bottle filler. Uh, I had to do some modifications on the old keg fridge to put that unit on. So I thought, well, while I'm doing modifications, might as well do another modification. And this is to allow me, help allow me to be able to keg my homebrew. Um, real quick, let's talk about what I'm talking about. Uh, talking about going from a Sankey keg to a corny keg. This is what they call a corny keg. Now, what's the difference between the two? two? Sankey kegs are the standard kegs that you'll find at any bar, pub, restaurant, sporting event, what have you. Um, they're generally 15-gallon kegs, even though they can be 5-gallon kegs and even uh, 7, 7 and a halfs. Um, 15 gallon kegs referred to as a half barrel, five gallon, a six barrel, and then the seven and a half is a quarter barrel. Anyway, they have the standard fitting that's about this big around, and this is a, a Sankey coupling, and you would just kind of clamp it on, then push down, and you tapped your keg. You have a beer line coming out and a gas line going in. That's the standard setup. Works great for bars. Unfortunately, it's not real friendly to home brewers because you can't really put your beer in. There's, some, it's, it's a ball, spring-loaded ball that's in that Sankey uh, coupling you can't refill your own keg the kegs go back to the back to the brewery or whatever uh so that's where the old corny keg comes in now the corny keg has two outlets uh one is for your beer out one is for your gas in where it's more convenient though for your home brewer is this convenient lid that pops off and allows you to fill and refill and reuse this keg even has a little bleeder here. So I can refill this keg. I can actually use this also. I can fill this sanitizer solution to run through my keg fridge. So what I need to do though is convert from this one unit now to the two post. And uh, that is what I'm going to talk you through today. Uh, real quick, what do we need for this little project. First and foremost, you're going to need a corny keg. I will leave links down below for all this stuff. And then the attachments that go on the corny kegs are these ball locks. You'll have a black, that's your uh, beer, that's for your beer, and you'll have a gray, that's for your gas. And you would just put them on like so, and voila. Now we're also going to have to change the fittings on the end of these or the tube tubing, um, we have to disconnect from this and then we'll switch the tubing over to these. Um, also, you'll need some clamps, some of these little clamps uh, for that. That's all you'll need. I will talk about these other parts when we get back, but anyway, that's what you need to do the changeover. And I'll uh, we'll cut now to this video I shot earlier. Forgive me for the video angles. I, I apologize. It was kind of tough doing work. But anyway, uh, we'll, uh, I'll show you how I was able to do the switch over and uh, we'll come back to kind of wrap up. All right, let's get started with our Sankey keg uh, conversion. First, we're just going to detach all the uh, tubing off our Sankey keg, our beer outline, and our gas inline. Next, we're going to... Uh, end up cutting the hose just above the connections. We're putting uh, new nipples and new fixtures on there. Sorry about the camera work. Uh, when I was shooting this, it appeared, you know, everything, I was getting everything on camera. Uh, also, be careful. <laughs> I'm using way too big of a knife for this project. Find you a nice little box cutter or something and do, do this on a flat surface. But just, I was just cutting those, uh, those fittings off on the end. Um, we're going to re replace those anyway with clamps, so just go ahead and cut it off, make, make your life easier. Now we're going to put on our new ball lock fittings. Uh, you might want to stick the tubing in some warm water, make it a little more flexible, or you could do like I did and just use brute force. They, they do come, they're fairly simple to put on, but like I said, you might need a little help. Um, once you get that snug on, make sure you already have your clamp on the hose 
ready to go. Um, you, you feel kind of dumb if you have to take, take that ball lock back off to put on your clamp. So get your clamp ready. Uh, these particular clamps, you can find in most hardware stores. Uh, my home brew shop did have some, so I purchased some there. But they're cheap. They're like 50 cents a piece. So get you a handful. Get you some extras just in case. Uh, tighten her up real quick. Make sure we get a nice snug fitting. That is a slotted screwdriver there, just so you know. Um, again, you want, want to make sure this is tight and snug. We don't want any leaks. Yep. Looking good there. Next, we'll go ahead and add on the connection for our gas inline. Uh, same thing. You can either heat, you know, you can either warm up that tube or just use brute force. And of course, remember that clamp. We'll give her a few, a uh, few quick screws to tighten her up. Again, once again, I'm sorry about uh, how this gets shot, but it was kind of hard getting a tripod in near that keg fridge and having room to do, <laughs> do my stuff. Um, well, actually, uh, just real, you just want to be real sure to tighten, tighten that clamp quick, get that hose, get a nice snug fit because we don't want any leaks. And uh, voila, we're looking good. And now to the last part, we're going to connect to our corny keg. Now remember, the black line is your beer out line, and the gray line, or the, the gray connector, is your gas in. Uh, with these ball lock, there's a little sleeve on the bottom. you got to kind of pull that up. You'll feel a little spring load. And you'll want to make sure to hear it click when you connect. Um, and you'll also feel that clicking You'll feel it connect. You want to make sure you get a nice snug fit because sometimes these won't sit quite properly. So make sure you get push it down all the way. And we'll all right, so that went too hard to basically because you already do have a you know a, a beer line and a gas line already with this. It's, you know they're now going in in the Sankey deal. They're going to the same coupling where on the corny it's going. Um, to two different destinations. Now, some of you out there may be wondering, well, hey, can I keep best of both worlds? You know, I mean, I want to homebrew some, but I may throw on a, you know, keg miller light sometime. There's a couple ways to go about it. Uh, one way is to find these, these nipples. Um, again, we'll change them out from, from the old nipples and you'll just put that wing nut back on. Voila, and then the same for the other, same for your gas. All right, we have these now. We have these, and you can find these nipple attachments too. And now all you have to do is just change that tube. We can let you know this loose and just change the tubing pull them off this put them on that uh fairly straightforward some people uh will go with uh you can find these uh nipples um out there sold separately and some people put them directly onto here and that way you can just do the connect um i have talked to some of my brewer friends and, and, and my local guy at the home brewing shop, he says um, that he's had trouble with that setup and that other people have told me they've had some issues. So that's why I didn't go with him. But uh, if that's something you're interested in, that's also a second option to do is just put the ball lock connectors directly onto your sand key setup. So, um, Either, either way, whatever works for you is fine. Now, real quick, why am I going to this setup? A, I've always wanted to keg my own beer. Um, I just like the idea of dispensing. But B, is, is that now I can force carbonate my beer. I'll do a separate video on this. But basically with this unit, and this tank's pressurized up to 130 pounds of pressure. But basically I can put my beer in here after fermentation, but with no bottle conditioning. 
and then I could put just the gas line in and force CO2 into that beer, let it sit for a day or two, and that will force that beer into solution. And now I've got a fully carbonated beer. I'm not worried about bottling or bottle bombs. Um, I could control the carbonation level easier that way. You know, you could just adjust. And there's several charts out there, you know, how many pounds of pressure for how long and how much beer. Just helps you create, again, a better product. I talked about this a little bit with the bottling uh, bottle filler. Um, again, just a great way to control carbonation to get a nice, evenly carbonated beer. You're also not worried about sediment because you're not reactivating fermentation. Um, overall, this should just help me have a better product. And again, the idea of having my own beer on tap just sounds really good. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.